couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? I'm Asaf Levavi and I welcome you to lesson number seven in Finally Understanding Chords, the 10 Lesson Chord Theory Masterclass course right here on Lickin' Riff in which we dissect the guitar neck for harmonies and uh, learn in depth about guitar chords, how to find them, how to build them, and why they look the way they do. So if you missed the previous six lessons, I strongly suggest you look at them and uh, go over them because even if you think you know the basic stuff, uh, it won't hurt and it might surprise you what you may learn. Uh, we went pretty in depth there. So, um, the cage method. Uh, we learned the cage method in the previous lesson, lesson number six, and now we're finally gonna apply it and see how it applies to everything else we've learned so far in terms of embellishments and different chord shapes. And in the end of the previous lesson, I showed you that you don't have to play the entire chord all the time. So, uh, for example, if you have the C-shaped chord, uh, you don't have to always play it. You can play the higher notes of it, which are the D shape. The same goes for the E shaped chord. You don't always have to play the full chord, especially if you're playing uh, in a band or just with a bass player or in a jazz setting. Jazz players rarely play the whole chord. They never play chords like this. Okay, you never hear this in jazz. Well, maybe you do, but very, very, very rarely. Um, so basically, and this will also lead us to the next lessons about complex chords. Uh, what you need to do is to take a look at the chords themselves and understand that you can play parts of the chord. For example, the E shape, you can take the bar off and put the finger where the bar was on the second fret and just play this. Okay, you get this in uh, the outro lick of Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. You get it all over. Okay, so um, that's the basis for it. And you can also just play these three notes on strings two, three, and four. It's a part of this. And you can also play the high strings. Okay, as an F shape. The F shape, the beginner F shape, is half of the full E shape. We talked about it in one of the first lessons. So uh, for the G shape chord, usually you don't play the bass notes here. You just play the high notes of the shape. You've probably seen it in uh, D settings here on seven, a bar on seven, and 10 on the E string. That's a G chord shape. This is a G shape D, okay? And you've seen this probably, including the open D string. And then you get this, which is a D chord. And this is a G shape just without the whole shape. Now, how do you use the caged method to find uh, more complex chords with embellishments? First, you need to know the minor chords. And um, this is where this gets interesting. Because when you're barring for C, okay, this is a G chord. Let's take an A chord. Okay, just because the open A string is a bass chord, and I want to make an example. So, um, if you play the C-shaped A. Bar on nine, C-shaped. Okay, you can tell that it's A because the pinky is on 12 on the fifth string and 12 is the octave of the open string. So this is A. Now if we want to turn it into a minor, this turns into this, okay? But what about the E string? Um, let me show you what just happened. This is the major third note in the C shape. Remember from the very first lesson, this is the major third. And if we want to lower it down to minor third, we take it a fret down. So it becomes this, okay, this, okay, this is C minor. So this would become A minor. Um, but if we're playing the bar, then we also have this major third note. And when we're playing C, we can't lower it down. But when we're playing a C-shaped bar, we can lower it down. And this gets lowered down to here. So we take what's left of the chord and play this. Now this is A minor. And we can also play it as a D minor shape over here. 
and uh, that also goes along with something that I showed you before, the C shape. Everywhere you have the C shape, you can play the D shape. And D minor, everybody knows D minor, so this is how you find a high version of A minor. Um, so you can play that with the A string, okay? Or add another note and play a full set of strings from the fifth string down physically up musically. This is one interesting choice. And um, the next interesting thing is to find embellishments. So for example, if we have E and we wanna play E add nine, all we have to do is to play the head of the chord, put the add nine where it's supposed to be, and just play these three notes. You don't have to play the whole chord. And this sounds really interesting. It's got a lot of space, breathing space in it. You don't always have to play the full chord. That's uh, the lesson I wanna give you here. And you can also not bar and just play the bottom notes of the chord. And you can do the same thing with the G shape. That way you can also do the minor variations. For example, in the C shape, the major third note, remember, one, three, five. Okay, the notes in C are in sequence. So um, you just take the major third down to minor third and you get this and you get harmonies, interesting harmonies. Um, and because they're played on the bass strings, they're a bit more um, resonant than the high notes which, which are thin. So uh, you can do it for the G head as well and create really somber and dark minor sounding chords. For example, when was the last time you saw anybody play A minor like this? Okay, this is A minor because this is the G head of A, okay, G, G sharp, A. And I just turned this into minor, okay? So you get this sometimes in classical music and that explains why they uh, play the chords in the bass because it sounds really, really good. So try it out yourself. Now about the embellishments, uh, I think I shouldn't really go uh, at length about this because you already know that you can move the shapes around. So A7 becomes the A7 shape for D, and you can also add the high seven note. Remember, the high seven note, okay? From the lesson about sevens, you can use this shape, okay? And of course, you can also do this. This is also D7. If you play it with the D string, then you get this as D7, you don't have to play the whole chord, okay? If, if you put this D7 on, you don't have to put everything and just play some notes of it. It's a really nice experiment. It widens your uh, visualization on the guitar neck. For example, uh, we have the C shape, right? So if we want to play the C7 here, then we'll play it like this, okay? We don't have to play neither of the E strings. We just put the seventh shape on. Play it. And if we want to play C major 7, all we have to do is take the minor 7 up to this, and then we get an interesting major 7 sound. Or we can just play this. Okay, these three notes, the bottom notes, or in C7, the C7 shape, I mean. This is E7. And of course, in the G shape, it's the same thing. So this would be B flat 7 don't have to play the whole chord. This is the take from this lesson. Okay, for example, uh, if we play this, this is uh, A7 sus4. Why? Because it's A7 and I take the major third up to the four and I have this. So all I have to do is play this with A and I get A7 sus4, a really Interesting sound, and if I add the open E string, I get an interesting sound there. A really interesting landscape, kind of a crystalline chord, and I can resolve it to major. Okay, and then I have an interesting A7 chord. And uh, here we're kind of trespassing into the next lesson, which have to do with jazz chords and uh, 
more complex harmonies. Um, this wasn't the jazz chord, but this, for example, is. So uh, we're going to discuss that and more in the next lesson. So I'll stop right here. This is a lot of information to digest because uh, starting from uh, this point on, there's no limit to what you can do on the guitar chord wise. You can find chords anywhere. If you want proof, just look at Ellen Holdsworth. The guy finds chords that nobody ever dreamt of. His fingers are all over the neck like this, like this. Okay, I'm not exaggerating. Take a look, Ellen Holdsworth. Nobody has any idea what the guy's playing, but if you break it down, really take the time to look at the chords he's playing. He's just playing really, really, really innovative uh, variations and voicings and inversions of the chord. We talked about inversions in the um, alternated bass chord uh, lesson, so have a look at that if you like. Um, I'll see you the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.